So many of us who have landed in unhealthy relationships stay despite being repeatedly mistreated. I wrote it that way on purpose. I was dying to say that. Repeatedly mistreated. Repeatedly mistreated and we stay? Think about just those few words. Repeatedly mistreated. It's awful what we do. And I want to talk about that. We were leading up to this topic all week. Talking about when they try to get back together with you. Now you have them back together with you. And I wanted to expand the topic of, because we mentioned it Wednesday's video, what are you going to accept from them now? What, what are you going to accept? What is absolutely a deal breaker for you? Does it have to go as far as name calling? We mentioned that. Does it have to go as far as them cheating? Does it have to go as far as what is your, what is it? What will you accept and what will you demand? Or will you just take what you can get? Or will you just not want to rock the boat? And as long as they're not being mean, you're going to convince yourself you're happy. Are you going to request the bare minimum to not, I made a joke Wednesday, wake the narcissist. But that's how you feel. You're walking around, don't want to like disturb, disturb. I'm a grown woman. I'm 55 years old. And if there's ever a time I'm going to disagree with somebody or disagree, I'm going to, I want the right to say it. I want the freedom to speak. I don't want to be looked down on. I don't want to be insulted. I don't want to be made to feel small. I don't want to be name called. I don't want to be disrespected, lied to, cheated on. There's a certain level of respect that I will now going forth, I will demand. I don't have to demand it. I just, if I receive less, I just don't deal with those people anymore. I'm, I'm getting, I'm the next generation. I'm my parents' age now. My parents are not my grandparents. I'm my parents. And I have a grown daughter. And I don't care if you're 25, 55, 35, or 85. Nobody should have to put up with disrespect from somebody. Why? Is it penance? Why? And I feel bad. Some women, men too. I just got into this pattern and I've allowed it for so long and I'm stuck here and I don't know how to stop it. And I feel bad, I do, because some people are afraid to turn it around. They don't know the lash that they, and it might literally be a lash, like you don't know. And so I don't ask people to confront or see, you know, cease what they're doing and create havoc in their home. But if you are, so if you're in a relationship, it's very tenuous how you can try to get the self-respect back that you might have lost being mistreated all these years. But certainly as you go forward, people you're getting into a relationship you're meeting someone and you feel like oh that was weird he's suddenly in a bad mood like he was fine all day now all of a sudden he's in a bad mood without question completely a different personality for no reason whatsoever i'm gonna ask that i don't date i think i've told you guys that plenty i know i made some shorts about it but you bet your sweet bippy, to use my mother's extract, that if I'm ever in a relationship again, I would say, if that were to happen, that little thing to me is a red flag. I would say, did you have a, I said, I, your, your voice is clearly different than it was at noon. Is there something you want to talk about? Did you have a bad afternoon? Now, at that moment, somebody may come by and say, oh, please, you're so nat. You, it depends on their reaction. Now, that's going to tell me what I need to know. Or I'll tell you later. It was a bad day, but I'll tell you can respectfully have a conversation about anything. What you're looking for is how are they reacting to everything? And I'm not nitpicking, but you can just watch a person in life and, and how they are with you. Are they mistreating you or not? And what are you going to allow going forward? I heard somebody say, well, at least he doesn't call me names. May I never have that be my bar. At least he doesn't call me names. That's actually what led me to this entire week's topic because it broke my heart. I want to ask you, what is your at least? At least he doesn't, at least he doesn't. I heard a friend on the phone the other day with his wife. They've been married 36 years, perfect. They seem so happy. And it's the way... The gentle way, the caring way, the respectful way that I heard my friend being with his wife. Quietly, not brash, 
not loud enough for the world to hear because a narcissist does that, don't they? If they're treating you well, they want everyone to know it and they're yelling it. Nope. I just happened to be sitting next to my friend, so I heard the conversation and it was nothing really private. He knew I was next to him, but it's just a respect, a respect. It's a mutual, honorable way of being. You know who I thought of listening to my friend with his wife? My grandfather, which is the highest compliment you could pay someone. My grandfather, every family has a saint. That was my grandfather. And you had to hear how he was with my grandmother. That's what I want. There was never like a threat coming down the pike of my grandfather calling my grandmother a name. Never. And it's gotten to the point that that's what we're accepting. We're accepting being shunned in public because they want to make us feel bad. We're accepting being insulted on the way out the door because they don't want us feeling too big for our britches, to use another one of my mother's expressions. Yeah. Oh, insert funny mom story really fast. So there was a neighborhood meeting and because you guys have gotten to know my mother now a few weeks ago with that video. So my Italian mother, they had pastry and coffee at the neighborhood meeting in the clubhouse. And my mother in the middle of it, she leans over, she goes, it's pastry and coffee. I go, no, 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 ma. I try not to eat sugar. I go, no, 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 I'm good. And she goes, we pay enough dues. I'm just saying, oh my God, I'm losing it. I'm trying to listen to the meeting. I know. I just thought of that now. Sorry. But you know, they don't want you too big for their britches. So we, we accepting them to say those jeans make you, you look big. I told you, he said that to me. I looked at the jeans. They're a size two. Now I'm half Italian. So I often say, okay, I, I keep an eye on this area and I make jokes and okay, it can get bit, whatever, whatever. But the math of the pants is says two. So I don't care if I was filling them out. That is not the word fat. And yet you say those jeans make you look fat. That you thought that was a nice thing. I'm not accepting that anymore. An unsolicited, you look fat in those pants statement. Goodbye. Goodbye. That's mean. That means to me, inside you have meanness that you need to expel. Because somebody might say, well, one name and they're out the door. It's not about that. It's not about that. It's about what's inside of you that you're mistreating me this way. And I'm not talking about details because everyone has their own. And I want you all right now, you're all going... Oh my God, I can't stand when he does that. I can't stand when he does that. That's disrespectful when he does that. So what are you, and you might be stuck in something. We don't tell people to leave and we don't give advice in that capacity. That's a very personal choice. And I know you can't maybe change the dynamic within your relationship right now without getting more disrespect. But by all means going forward, if you can make moves to help yourself out, do it. And if you are entering new relationships, people, Watch for that. And don't convince yourself otherwise. He's gorgeous. He's a doctor. He's your age. He talked about marriage and children. Okay. Or a lawyer or teacher or whatever is attractive to you. But I'm just kind of yelling out things, okay? And then all of a sudden now he had the moodiness. And, and, and he came back with a really unhealthy reaction when you said, why your voice is totally different tonight. And he never comes back from it. He might be a narcissist who's juggling two women and she might have just fought with him. I swear that happened to me once. It was like silent. Dinner was silent. Silent? We didn't have a fight. It was just silent. I look back. I think he was probably juggling other supply and they said something he didn't like. So they could be sulking and not even anything to do with you because they're already juggling people. You got to watch for this. Consistency. Kindness. Respect. Are they honorable people? Are they honorable people? Are they honorable? And I think that you can tell a lot about a person if you just let them talk and you listen and you watch. And what are you willing to not accept when you go forward? My list is pretty long, my bar is pretty high. And again, it has a lot to do with because I'm already happy. Right? Some people, they think they're going to be happy when they get a partner. And that's fine. That's f Some people, they're just not happy alone. I get that. They get lonely. I get that. That's a different kind of person. And they think, when I find somebody, I'll be happy. I wish they knew that you really can be happy by yourself. So when you figure that out, I don't need to accept any. Why would I accept anything? Well, you have to compromise if you want a relationship. No, I really don't. Unless I meet... Somebody honorable like my friend who talks to his wife or my grandfather. Talk, and these kind of men, they talk well about their wives when their wives aren't there. It's not the guy, oh, the old ball and chain. That's a red flag from a mile away. 
well, they're already married. Hopefully you're not involved with them. But I'm just saying, listen, listen to how they talk. Listen to how they talk about their mother. Listen to how they talk about other people. How are they treating you? Comes from all of the kind of person that they are. And you need to demand for yourself. Look, I'm getting mad. I'm not, I'm not spitting. But as you go forward, you need to demand for yourself nothing less than the way you would treat your own self or you would treat your own child or your parents or think of a person you revere and love more than anything in the world, right? Or anyone in the world, for it, whoever it is, they should treat you the way you would treat that person with the same reverence and respect because we all deserve it. We all deserve compassion and respect and human decency. There. My soapbox is over. Have a good weekend. Thanks for watching. It's Renee Flamand. Please hit sub, like, and share and get this um, word out to everybody so we all start being nicer to each other. Talk to you guys later.